Hello everyone, welcome again uh, to this accounting studio. Today we are going to learn how to compute profits using both marginal and absorption costing systems. I don't know that profits are computed using income statements, so we're going to prepare the income statements uh, for both marginal and absorption costing systems. So our question here, Wool Limited manufactures a single product, the B, as shown below. We are given the particulars over here. We are given the annual fixed production overheads budgeted. Uh, we are also given the actual fixed overheads. We are given the selling cost, fixed, as well as variable. And we are given the sales and production units for the quarter, January to March. The question requires us to prepare statements of profit or loss for the quarter using marginal costing, absorption costing, as well as reconciling the profits so obtained. So, we'll have to prepare the income statements. Uh -huh. So, as seen over here, we have the marginal costing income statement as well as the absorption costing income statement. So, the first issue to do when preparing the income statement, yeah, we usually take sales and the less cost of sales. So, Starting with the marginal costing system, how do you obtain sales? Sales are obtained by multiplying the selling price per unit by the unit sold. So back to the question over here. We are told that January to March we made sales of two fifty thousand, production of two seventy thousand, and the selling price is back where the question is one eighty dollars per unit. So to our question, to obtain sales, we take selling price, 180, times 250,000, uh, the unit sold, and we obtain this one, 45 million. The figure uh, is in thousand dollars. Then we will we'll have to compute the variable cost of sales. Variable because this is a marginal costing system and we value inventory using only variable production costs. So. The cost of sales obtained by taking the opening inventory, adding it to production, and less in closing inventory. So how do you obtain this 70 for here? To, opening, to obtain opening inventory, we take cost per unit, we multiply by the units in opening inventory, and the same goes for production as well as closing inventory. So let's, let's compute first the, uh, the opening inventory. The unit cost of it, how much? How did you obtain that 70? Here it is, working one, marginal standard cost card. Working one, direct material given forty, direct labor twenty dollars, and variable production overhead ten dollars. Note that this is the cost of a product, so all the production costs are involved. So we obtain seventy for your forty, twenty, and ten. We obtain seventy. So back to the question. Here are the opening inventory seventy. We have to multiply by the opening inventory units, which are given in the question over here. Here. There is an inventory of 10,000 units of product at the beginning of January. That means this is the opening inventory. So we'll have our opening inventory, which is uh, 10,000. So the same goes for production, the cost per unit, which is 70 times the units produced, which was 270,000. You obtain this. And then closing inventory. How do you obtain closing inventory? Closing inventory is obtained by taking the summation of opening inventory and production and then subtracting the units sold. So we'll have 10,000 units plus 270,000 units less units sold which were 250,000 units. And this is shown in the another working over here, closing inventory units, opening inventory units plus production units less sales units and we obtain the 30,000. So back to the question, we obtain this, this figure 70 times uh, 30,000 units, we obtain 2.1 million. So if we take this plus this minus this one, we obtain 17,500 and this is a variable cost of sales. So we have already obtained the variable cost of sales that relate to production, but we have not added the variable cost that is not related to production. And from our question, we only have the selling cost. Here we are told the fixed selling cost are that and the unit variable cost. $15. So since it's a variable cost, we just take $15 per unit times unit sold, which was $250,000. So we multiply here, 15 times $250,000, and we obtain this figure here. 
So adding these two, we obtain the total variable cost. That means variable cost of sales plus variable selling cost, and we obtain 21,250. And if we subtract this 21,250 from our sales figure that is 45, means 45 minus 21,250, we obtain the contribution margin. Note that contribution equals to sales less all variable costs. So we have our contribution margin over here. And after that, we have exploited all our variable costs. We are left only with fixed costs, so we less total fixed costs. And from the question, we have the fixed production cost as well as the fixed selling cost. Back to the question, fixed production cost per quarter was how much? 4.25 million here. Uh, and that relating to selling costs, uh, this one, 3 million. So we add them, we have worked on the total and we subtract them from the uh, contribution margin figure. And then we obtain 16,500. This is a profit for the quarter. And that, that's the marginal costing income statement. So as simple as that. To prepare marginal costing income statement, take sales, less all variable cost, but separate the variable cost, not relating to sales and not, not relating to sales. After that, subtract all fixed cost and you are done. Let's go to the absorption costing income statement. So sales as usual, just the same as for marginal costing system, less cost of sales. The same with this one, but the only difference here is that uh, an absorption costing system values inventory using both fixed and variable cost components relating to production. So the unit cost here using the absorption costing system will be different than the it is seen over here. Look at this working number three absorption standard cost card. Direct material is here with the marginal, direct labor is for the marginal, variable production overheads 10 is for marginal, but there's an addition of fixed production overheads that can also be termed as overhead absorption rate. And it has been computed in working four. We know that overhead absorption rate and that inventory is usually valued using standard costs. So, to obtain the overhead absorption rate, we take the budgeted fixed production overheads divided by the budgeted production units. Note that this question is all about a quarter, just a quarter. But if you read the question, uh, this budgeted fixed production overheads of $16 million is per annum, is on a per annum basis. And the WOO's normal production is this figure here, 1.28 million units. So, don't bother and don't be disturbed by the fact that this figure is related to the, to the year while this is related to, to the quarter. Just divide by $16 million, divided by 1.25 million units. This is because uh, all the figures relate to one year, so no problem. Actually, in the later examples, we'll be seeing the, uh, the method using the FIFO, the FIFO method. And that FIFO method maybe ca can require us... Uh, to deal with the quarter as a quarter and the year as the year. So right now, we just take the figures for the year. So $16 million divided by 1.28 million units. D this divided by this and we obtain our over the absorption rate. And so we add, we, we add it up here and obtain 82.5. So this is how this figure, this cost per unit was arrived at. So this plus this less this one, you obtain this one. And this will be our cost of sales. Now, in absorption costing system, you usually represent something called a variance. Or, in here, it is just called under or overabsorbed overheads. What does it mean by under or overabsorbed overheads? First, absorbed overheads means fixed production overheads that are already included in the income statement. So, if such overheads differ to what should actually have been included, that means if they differ to the actual overheads, we we'll have to make a provision. So, in case the absorbed overheads are greater than the actual overhead, that means we absorbed more. We included more than what we should have included. And so we have to subtract it from cost of sales. Otherwise, we have to add it back there. So... If you look at our, this working number, num, working number five, overall and absorbed overheads, we computed the absorbed overheads. And the absorbed overheads are computed by taking the overhead absorption rate, which actually 
In our case, in the fixed cost per unit, we multiply by the actual units produced. 12.5 times 270,000 and we obtain 3.375 million dollars. Actually, as I said, absorbed overheads means overhead that have already been included in the income statement. And this can be seen over here. This is 12.5. And note that uh, in this figure, how did we arrive at this 82.5? In the first place, it, the cost per unit was 70, but now it is 82.5. That means 12.5 has increased. So, if you look in production section here, this 82.5 times 270 means that there is a component of 12.5 times 270 that has already been included in production, and that is the absorbed overheads. So, we have actually included that figure, while we should have included this one, actual fixed production overheads in car, they are $4.25 million for the quarter. So, we make a comparison over here. We compare here. Actual fixed production overheads, $4.25 million, and then we compare. We, we are supposed to absorb 4.25, but actually we have absorbed only 3.375. So absorbed overheads are less than actual overheads, and this means uh, there is an underabsorption. So if you take the difference, we obtain $875,000. This is the underabsorption. So since it's underabsorption, we just add it back to our cost of sales and you obtain the real figure this plus this one you obtain this one so after here we subtract this figure from the sales figure and you obtain the gross profit after the gross profit we have already dealt with all production costs so we have left all you are left with are uh, only non-production costs be the be it variable be it fixed you don't care about that at all and we all that from here we all that from here uh we only had selling costs and the additional cost so variable selling cost 15 times 250 just same like this and then fixed selling cost 3 million we subtract and don't get this figure is the profit for the quarter note that the difference there are differences in profits this is 16500 for marginal costing and 16750 for absorption costing so that means we later on learn how to reconcile the statements to account for the differences in profits why a difference arose while well, difference arose actually uh, the two profits are related by this equation over here absorption costing profit equals to marginal costing profit plus over the absorption rate and the movement in inventory closing minus opening inventory in the later chapter we'll uh, learn how to reconcile such the profits thank you and then until next time